Hey folks, welcome to the very, this very first introductory video to perfect or pure competition. You'll hear it uh, in, in both formats, but basically what we're looking at this week are the types of market structures. How are markets in a country or in a particular region structure? Is it uh, what kind of products are available? Are they identical? Are they not identical? Um, how is price determined? Is it determined by how much people are willing to pay or is it set by the very few people or the one person who actually makes all of everything? Um, and also at the same time, how easy is it for you to start a business in this market? So again, a market is any sort of um, area or region encompassing a lot of the same economic values. Basically, when we say a market in, economic, uh, in economics, it refers to this a particular industry. I want you to think of one particular industry with um, either many different types of products or one type of product. So let's think about this. You and your friends uh, both are, let's say all of you and your friends on Facebook, all of you sell shampoo. You've only connected with the people on Facebook who sell shampoo. So all of you sell pretty much the same product. Let's say that you all sell um, shampoo with different names on the brand or different brand names, but essentially it's all coconut. Okay. Let's say you all, you only sell coconut shampoo and coconut conditioner. So a lot of people can come to you in the store, let's say Walmart, and they can see all these different shampoo products lined up along the wall, along the aisle walls, and then they can pick and choose which brand they want, but it's all the same product. Pure competition refers to this kind of idea that, or this kind of uh, market in which it's very easy for people to come through and enter the market. There are a lot of firms, a lot of people like you and your friends producing the same exact product. There's not really a variety of the products. So for example, it would be like you and uh, shampoo, you and the rest of the shampoo folks would only be producing one kind of shampoo. Barriers to entry. This refers to the fact that if you, if I wanted to start, if I also wanted to get invested in the shampoo business, that you and your friends couldn't stop me from creating my own business. That it's relatively easy for me to enter the market and to also leave the market. So if I want to start producing shampoo, all I have to do is start making shampoo. But if I want to leave it, all I have to do is stop producing shampoo. I also don't have any control over prices. So what that means is, is if, if I charge too much money for my shampoo, then they're just going to go, the customers are just going to go to the next best, next best brand that's cheaper and does the exact same thing my product does. So if we all sell coconut shampoo, they're just going to ignore my brand that charges 20 bucks for a bottle and go for the bottle that's only eight bucks on the other, on the other side of the aisle. So in a pure competition kind of market structure, there are a lot of businesses, a lot of firms. There's little variety in the goods and services produced. Uh, there's li limited barriers to entry. All it, all it takes is just you have to start producing that one particular good or service that everyone else does. And there's also no control over prices. So at least on the producer side. That also applies to the car market. You can easily start selling cars if you start making them. There are no barriers to entry like Audi or Volkswagen can't come up to you and be like, hey, look, like uh, we're the bullies on the block, so we're going to shut you down. They can't do that because, frankly, it's so easy for anyone to produce a car if they really were interested on it or if they really wanted to build a factory to do that, that they could. Again, there's many buyers or sellers. And again, you hear it as either perfectly competitive or pure, pure competition. And that just refers to the fact that there are so many – People selling the same products, so there's a lot of competition. For example, if I was selling coconut shampoo, I'd have to compete with all of you and your friends who also sell coconut shampoo in order to earn that same dollar that uh, that buyer's going to eventually spend on whatever shampoo they decide to buy. Now, there's also identical products with different names. There, it also rests on this idea that people who buy the same good or service from different people are still going to be very informed. So that they're going to be able to to determine, okay, look, I know that Audi is selling this car for 30 grand, but it's, I basically have an identical SUV or product with Buick. So I'm going to go buy the Buick SUV that's $20,000 compared to um, the Audi SUV because, frankly, that yeah, I'm going to go with the cheaper option that still do this, does the same thing. Also, there's free entry and exit, like a free market system where there's very little involvement by the government. Basically, other firms can't come by and say, "Hey, look, uh, we're going to basically take your stuff," or the government's not going to come by and uh, it's not gonna, the government might come by and take your stuff. You can easily enter and exit the market just by producing and not producing. So, I'm going to keep 
trying to go over this again you don't really have any control over prices it's, it's determined by how much people are willing to pay because again if you try to sell your carrots for too much money then there's the customers are just going to go to a different farmer who sells the car same ca same kind of carrots but at a cheaper price now perfectly competitive markets are efficient because what a competition allows individuals to do is not waste resources. So if you're competing with someone else who has the same kind of shampoo you do, you're going to make sure that you keep your costs low in order for the consumers to try to buy as much as the, as, as you can produce because uh, you're competing with the other folks. And at the same time, you can try to work to keep your um, cost of production low by only meeting the demand. You don't have to worry about oversupplying because there's essentially, if you try to produce all the way up here, it's, which is going to exceed demand, there's going to be a surplus, you're actually going to lose money um, for your 